Hi, my name's Katie and welcome to my channel. And today I've got Colty here with me. How's it going, guys? So Colty is here all the way from Nova Scotia. Yes, all the way from Canada, if you don't know where Nova Scotia is. I actually went to Nova Scotia when I went to visit the King of DIY, Joey, which many of you are probably familiar with. Today is a little bit of a spontaneous, random kind of video. So Colty is visiting Australia at the moment. So Gold Coast and Brisbane, which is where I'm from. He's with his friend Nick as well, who is He's in the tidal pool somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and Nick is on a mission to find a stonefish. Stonefish like, and blue ringed octopus. That man is unstoppable. Yeah. Like, I'll show you what he's got. He's got like a full like rock pulling kit and everything on. Colty actually saw the video that I did almost, no, maybe more than half a year ago now, which was here at Hastings Point uh, with Finn and Wilson from Atlas Aquarium. And we went out at nighttime and did some rock pulling, but I thought it'd be really good for us to go at low tide in the daytime, even though it's a little bit harder to catch stuff in the daytime because things are, it's a bit faster. They're not as sleepy and stuff. I still think that what would be interesting is to actually use these these fish traps like what we used when we went looking for rainbow fish in the creeks to catch them and see if we can actually catch stuff in the rock pools in these fish traps too. Yeah I'm crossing my fingers on some of the, the eels. Yeah maybe. I know they got moiré, moiré eels here. I don't know the exact species or name of the species. I know they're white and black. It's kind of like the blind leading the blind because I do not know a lot about saltwater stuff. All I know is how to use these fish traps and you've done fish trap stuff before. I have, well, so. yeah, yeah. Oh, Back here in comes Canada. Nick actually. Did you catch anything, Nick? Um, yeah, like a little uh, jellyfish, but it wasn't too cool. I'm honestly surprised by the lack of biodiversity here. Oh yeah, no. I haven't seen a lot of animals at all. Okay. Like the jellyfish was actually the only thing I saw in that entire, and like one crab. Okay. Well, it's all right. We're gonna see if we can find something with our fish traps. We're just filming at the moment. Oh, the sorry. No, no, you're allowed to be in it. Um, so I don't know if you could hear what Nick said, but he's not satisfied at the moment. <laughs> it's a lack of biodiversity yeah. so far. So we'll see if we can find something better. So I think let's set up these fish traps and at least just get them out. So then they're set and something can hopefully wander into them and maybe we'll catch a moray eel. I'm feeling lucky. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. So what I'm wearing right now are called waders. They're pretty much to make it so that as I'm going through the tide pools, water can't get to me. I'm entirely dry all the way up to my chest. So right now, Colty, as you can see, he's like, his feet are soaking wet. He's probably cold. He's having a good I'm time talking. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a lot warmer here though than in Nova Scotia. In oh yeah, I so. bet, I bet. The water is probably warmer. In my, in my instance, anytime I go tide pooling, I wear them. They're called waders. They are super, super helpful. And sometimes you see something in deeper water and you're like, oh my God, I want to go get it, but I really don't want to get wet. Not even a thought with these guys. You definitely have to give them a shot. If you're looking for stonefish too, then oh, it's yeah, yeah. to have this type of attire. This is like stonefish 101 right here. And it's deceivingly deep as well. It's crazy deep. I'm not wet at all right now. <laughs> I am entirely dry. It also feels cool because the waders really like compress. So it's like you're on ice almost. All right, let's open our sausages. Oh, gross. I hate out of date meat. Ugh. Do you think we should just chuck like the whole sausage in? That is so nasty. Yeah, I let's know. do it. I should have brought hand sanitizer. That's how you know it's good bait. Oh, it almost yeah, That would have been funny. We have our sausage in our fish trap. Now we need to go and put them. And I'm just going to wash my hands quickly because that's disgusting. Alrighty. So we're going to do this, this spot. Would you yep. recommend any spots down that way? There's a nice channel flowing through these rocks right over there. Okay. Um, that'd probably be nice, but I think this is a good like first location. I'm just not sure like if there's going to be anything hiding in this area enough. How do you know not to put it three feet to the left of exactly where you're putting it? I'm just choosing it based on where the rocks are because I've never used these in salt water. I've only used them in freshwater rivers. So when we've used it in freshwater rivers, we find that if there's a little area that's like this where there's coverage for animals then they're more likely to be around there, so. Would you be upset if I tripped and dropped your camera in the salt water? Yes, I would be very upset if you did that. Yeah, okay, get out. And it looks like Cody's finding a spot. We'll just record until we place that one. Maybe somewhere in that area, which is there. This area? Yeah, I think maybe near the rock, so there's still some coverage for creatures, but then that's kind of near where the water's coming Ooh. in. And it's deep enough. What about around this? It looks kind of protected. Yeah, I, I don't want it to drift good. out. Oh yeah, do you tie it on something? Yeah, yeah. So you pop it in and then you can just attach it to a rock so we don't lose it. Maybe we'll put it here where it's a little bit more protected. That's a little bit more of a shallow area. So 
should be able to stay. I think I just stuck my phone in the water. There's a shitload of fish right there. Oh, really? Um, you can see them. Oh my God, look at them all. Oh my gosh. They're everywhere. Look at that. Too. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah. Colty actually saw a wobbygong and he almost caught it, but it just got away. So he was very disappointed about that. We put the leftover sausages just in the water, hopefully trying to entice that shark to maybe come back. But these fish came and just absolutely devoured it. <laughs> sausages as well. So I'll have to look at the GoPro footage. So we've just got the first trap up, but I pulled it over here because it's getting a little bit high tide, so it's a little bit dodgy taking the gimbal and the camera in. But we got four little puffer fish. And so I thought they were kind of toad fish and that toad fish didn't puff up, but then Coldy was holding one and it started to puff up. I think yeah, it's fine it now, up by the quite way. Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, he's finally with that down. Died. They do? They're also very poisonous. Oh, you were holding one. Well, they're poisonous to eat, not hold. You're oh, okay. They're not venomous. Yeah, we're all live. Do you want to hold one again? Uh, no, okay. Do you want to hold one? Yeah. Alright, Nick will hold one and we can show you guys. Are they nibbly? I don't know. Oh, they're so chill. They kind of just vibes. Oh, he's a little baby. It takes a lot to make them pop up. He just knows I'm a good guy, you know? <laughs> oh, he's like he's grunting. I want to put him back. Do you guys have all your shots? Yeah, you can pop him back. Alright, so we're going to release our little toadfish that we caught so that they can get some oxygen. We will let them be free. Go little guys. <laughs> wow, they're fast. Let's go and check out other trap that is right here and we'll see what we can find. I did have a little peek before and I saw that there was some little fish in there, so I think we should be in luck. Oh, I think I can see something. Oh, we've got another toadfish and it looks like we've got some smaller type of fish that are stripy as well. How good are you at identifying fish? Pretty good. All right, maybe. But I'm not familiar with the species here, so probably pretty bad. Well, maybe you can give us a little bit of an idea of what they might be. Fill up our bucket. And so this is how easy it is to use these traps. You literally just pop some food in them and then you can get a bucket or you put food in it, leave it. And then once you've left it for a bit, you can have a look. And if you've got something, you can get a little bucket of water and you just unzip it. And you put the fish in here so you can have a better look at what you found. All right, let's have a look. I thought that was a giant sea cucumber. <laughs> oh, those are mud skippers. They're mud skippers. Oh, no way. It's gonna skip right out of my hand. Oh, it's so cute. There's a little baby one. So I got a little mud skipper. Oh, and he skipped off. Wet. To be fair, those might not even be mud skippers. <laughs> they might be mud skippers. They might be mud skippers. I'm pretty sure they are, but All right. I'd hate to misinform. It seems like so far with our traps, we've caught toadfish and some type of mud skipper slash goby thing. Pretty successful. Pretty successful. And so the smaller fish we found in the shallower area here, and then we found more of the bigger fish where it was a bit deeper. And we did see a wobbygong over there as well, which is a big shark. It's like a carpeting shark but I think it went back out to sea. But we did place some sausages just in the water up there as well to see if we can maybe entice it back. So Colty just caught a carpeting shark or a wobbygong. This right here is a wobbygong shark, absolutely gorgeous. The very first shark that I've ever caught in my entire life. And the crazy thing is I caught it with my bare hands 
underneath that rock. This is just a little baby. They get three times the size of this one right here. Dip him in the water real quick so yeah. you can breathe. Oh my God, he's coming at me. We let the little wobby gong go. Then we just had a little bit more of a look around. We saw a crab hiding under a rock, but we couldn't quite get it. And I also caught a blue bottle. Then we actually headed to Burley Heads and got some lunch, then up to the sunny coast to look at some other rock pools and meet up with another friend named Julian. They were very different. The rocks were a lot flatter. I even saw this sea hare, which I think is super cute. They're these big sea slugs, but they look like little rabbits and they grow really, really big. So that was awesome seeing that. And I was really surprised to actually see some zoas, so a type of coral in the rock pools here as well. The water was quite brown here because we've had a lot of rain recently in Brisbane. Let me know what you think of these vlogs and if you enjoy them. Give it a like if you did. Check out Colty's page and check out Nick's page as well. They've got really entertaining, diverse content and really nice guys too. If you're enjoying my content, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel too. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.